Having experimented with this myself, I can say that it's, it's really useful. I, th I definitely think it works. And that is mental rehearsal. So when you're uh, coming up to a tournament, you might, be, you might be going through your head over and over again. You might be thinking about it, you might be worried about it. Well, use that. If you can't stop thinking about it, fine, great, use that. While you're thinking about it, practice positive mental um, uh, thoughts and images. There you go. <laughs> positive mental imagery. So when you're on the on the course, when you're like, well, at home, sorry, and you're thinking about being on the course, you know, imagine hitting golf shots. Imagine hitting them really well. Imagine performing your movements in your golf swing. If you're working on something, imagine performing them perfectly, flawlessly, seamlessly, and the ball peeling off exactly where you want it. Can be a perfect ball flight right on your target. You know, imagine it over and over again. Imagine. So my point is, is that mental rehearsal is as good as physical rehearsal apparently according to some study excuse me i don't know what the study is but uh who it was from i remember i read it quite a while ago now but the point was is that mental rehearsal is as good as physical and having experimented with it and tried it myself i can definitely vouch for that i think it definitely is it's really really powerful stuff you still got to do the physical rehearsals obviously you still got to do the practice still got to do the drills <laughs> you can't get away with just laying on the sofa thinking about golf swings and become a tour pro <laughs> that doesn't work that way but thinking about it does help. It definitely, definitely helps. Uh, ways to help trigger that think thought process is to practice in small amounts regularly. Now, I remember someone else on another golf coaching website, I remember they, they mentioned that it takes 100 repetitions for the brain to even acknowledge that it's learning something new. And there may be some really good truth to that. Um, However, I'm not sure if, if that works on just the one-off or whether you're practicing the same thing over and over again over a period of days, weeks and months, whether you still need to do 100 reps each time. I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, I definitely feel I've made massive progress doing less than 100 reps by just doing 20 reps, 10 reps, just doing it regularly and just when I think to. And also by doing it regularly like that, you get good mental rehearsal because you think, oh, I better do my drills. And just by having it on the brain like that, that seems to make a difference. That definitely seems to help. So if you need to drill something, Yes, 100 reps in a sitting. I do try and aim for 100 reps in a sitting, by the way, because if there is any truth to that, then it's worth you know, using it. And it, more importantly, it gives you a target to aim for. It gives you something to try and strive for and, and gives, gets you motivated to do more practice and do more repetitions. So absolutely, all day long, go for 100 reps. I normally would do mine, to be honest, especially depends on what you're working on. If you're working on like backswing positions or, or this position here, Good luck doing a hundred of those in a sitting. That's quite tough. I'm sure there's plenty of you there that can do that easily, but I find that difficult. I'll normally do it in batches of 25. So I'll do 25, have a breather for a minute, do another 25, that'll be my 50. By then I've kind of had enough anyway. Uh, I'll have a rest, maybe watch a bit of TV, may come back and then do me other 50, you know. I might do 50 in the morning and 50 in the evening. So I'll get my 100 reps in if I'm working or drilling something, but um, I think, depending on what you're working on, 100 in one sitting is a, is a, is a big ask. Uh, I remember one guy came for me, to me for a lesson years ago at my old workplace, and he said he was having trouble with releasing early. He would release early like that. And he was like constant, he's like, oh, I can't do anything about it. So I gave him drills to do. I gave him one with two clubs, I gave him uh, just to practice on its own. I got him rotating more, so I got, I'd done all kinds of stuff, all these drills, and I gave him like, two or three set drills to go out and take away and I said just do loads and loads and loads that's what you need to do to change it through repetitions because it's not going to change on its own or through thought alone so he went away and he practiced it and he came back like the drills didn't really make any gains very minimal if anything um, anyway about a month into it about three or four lessons in maybe a bit more than a month he phoned me up and uh, he said, I just can't, I'm just not changing. I'm just, nothing's changed. I can't do it. I said, well, you can do it. I know you can do it. It's just numbers. It's almost like simple maths. You do the numbers, you'll get the results. So came into his lesson and we went through it. I said, look, let's just figure this out. What is going on? How many of these drills with two clubs are you doing? We said, well, I'll do about four of those. He said, then I'll do about four of those. Then I'll do four of this other one. I was like, and that's it, and I, I won't do it every day. I mean, I'll do it, you know, maybe four, five, three, four, five times a week. I thought, well, what do you expect? You know, you're doing 12 repetitions three times a week. Your swing isn't going to change with that number. It's just not. Any progress will be absolutely minimal. So you've got to bang it out, you've got to do the numbers. Anyway, I said to him, like, try and do 100 repetitions each day. So maybe build up to it. Start with 40 in the day. You know, spread it out as well. 
and then the next day or the day after, if you need a bit of recovery time, build it up again, try to get to 50. Try and work your way up to 100 repetitions a day and your swing will definitely change. You'll, physiologically, you will change. You know, new neuro pathways, connections being built and reinforced overnight when you're sleeping and all that kind of stuff. It's all gonna be really good for you. You need to get, get the numbers in. Anyway, he went away, um, did the practice, I think, for about, five, for about a week, injured himself, never see him again. <laughs> Sadly, you win some, you lose some. But the point is, I don't think, well, he maybe jumped in too fast, done too many too quick. He didn't ease in 40 and then 50 and then 60. He tried to do the whole lot. Maybe he was embarrassed because he didn't realise that the numbers he was doing was too few. So then tried to go overboard and done too many. I don't know. But the point is, you need to do lots of reps and lots of practice to get your swing to change. But start with small numbers and build your way up just to make sure you don't get any injuries. You get any niggles, don't force your way through it. Don't power through and cause an injury. You know, rest it, maybe find out what's going on, see a physiotherapist, if you know, especially tennis elbow is a really big one, a key one. You know, you can use straps on your arm to support it. That's, they're really useful, by the way, they can really help. Um, and yeah, and figure that out and then push on from there.